Hey everybody, this is Rob Gothier, the E.T. Whisperer. Hey everyone, I want to thank all of you guys for your patience. It's been a long time since you've seen a Metatron video, and this month's Galactic video is already running late. I want to explain a little bit about that before we get started. For those of you who might just have subscribed to me, or who have just found out who I am, or about my work recently, after the interview with Daryl Anka, the workload has increased. A lot of people who saw Daryl Anka's channeling of Bashar started noticing my own channeling or had seen it before and started listening to it again. So it brought a lot of people uh, towards our own work. And since then, we've tried to ramp up different videos and more content for our subscribers. And as the subscriber list grows and as more attention has been brought to the channeling we do, we have tried to get out more videos. Now, in the last few months before that Dare Lanka video, I was having trouble with one of my computers. I'm kind of a tech guy, so I build my own computers, I service my own computers, I rarely ever get them repaired from someone else. I usually know how to take care of all of those things with my computer, and it was starting to have problems before that interview. So after the interview, uh, we get back from our Asheville trip uh, in North Carolina, and within a few days of getting back, I had to get my son. Now, for those of you who don't know anything about that situation, my son is a 17-year-old. He has cerebral palsy, so since he was born, he hasn't been able to walk, talk, eat. I have to bathe him, feed him, change his diapers, the whole thing. And I have custody of him two weeks out of each month. So half of the month I get him, half of the month his mom gets him. So when we have my son here, the schedule is never set in stone. A lot of the times he'll go to school and he might have seizures at school so he has to come home early. And that's why I only allow one personal session per day when he's here. And that's 9 o'clock at night. That's after he goes to sleep. I was doing daytime sessions when he was supposed to be at school, but when he would come home from seizures, I'd have to reschedule, and pretty soon I ended up getting so backlogged with all the people I had to reschedule with, I ended up just avoiding doing work on those times. And then when he's not here, we take at least three days out of the two weeks off so we can shoot the videos, we can do editing and do all that stuff. So there's a limited amount of time I can channel per week, and a lot of our time before the computer got broke, or during the time the computer got broke, we were putting into all the video work and stuff like that. So we went to shoot the video, which we were a few days late because my son had just left after having him two weeks after the Asheville event. And then when we get to shooting, we were already a couple days late. We came home and tried to edit it and our computer permanently crashed. I ended up spending almost three weeks trying to figure out what was going on with it. Uh, trying to order different parts, trying to see if the computer was communicating with one another, and we ended up having to buy another computer. Now, that took a big chunk of our savings out, so we had to buy that, and then we ended up putting an investment in that, and we found out most likely what's wrong with the other computer, and we did a few different tests so far, and it looks to be working. So now, we have the possibility of having two really good, really strong computers to do all of our video editing and stuff, and now we're going to run in with some new energy and videos for that. But another thing I really wanted to share is a realization that I had today. During the times that me and Kalina don't have my son, we sometimes go to the coffee shop, and she's been working on her written channeling and her book that she's doing. Well, I am supposed to be, but I haven't been. Every time I get there, I end up tinkering with the computer or doing some other stuff for the website. So today I finally set, and I haven't touched this book that I've been doing with Ardiff for several months. It's called Galactic History, an Ancient Pleiadian Perspective with Ardiff. This is some of the most profound information uh, that I've ever seen available about galactic history. I finally started reading that again so I can get back in sync with the energy that me and Ardiff were doing, and I couldn't get past the second paragraph of the first chapter. And it was so intense and hit me so strongly, that intense energy and information that was being shared, I actually had to stop. I became overwhelmed with the energy and information. And I realized that since my father passed 
and last year October right after we got done doing the channel panel in Los Angeles two-day event with eight of the best channelers in the world we ended up coming back and my father was sick and after he got sick uh, within a month and a half he ended up passing away I was with him the whole time I was taking him back and forth to the hospital all the time. I was taking care of him at the house. And there was a lot of work I was doing with my son, too. Now, remember, my son needs 100% care taking care of him. He's in a wheelchair. He needs lifting and all those things. And then my dad passed. When my dad passed, this was such a thing that was so heavy on my heart and so deeply embedded of a part of who I was that when I lost him, I felt like I really lost him. And I know, working with Trevin Ardiff, knowing all the things that I know, I didn't really lose him. But that doesn't change that pain you feel when you are separated from the experience that you're used to when you're used to being with someone. And my dad wasn't just my dad. He was like my best friend. Uh, he was my mentor, my teacher, a uh, best friend, father, and all things encompassing the masculine divine energy. He was the one who taught me how to be a man and not just a man but a divine masculine being so losing a part of him uh, the way I got to experience him left me very very uh, hurt and I thought I healed from it a few times I tried to jump back into the work which is the one thing I love and the one thing I'm so passionate about besides my relationships with my son uh, Kalina all my dear friends and family I try to put that energy into that and I would do all right, but sometimes I would just start getting overwhelmed. The amount of energy it takes to channel these entities is very intense. My own physical health, because I'm overweight, makes it very tiring for me when I channel a lot. And I was trying to channel not just the normal average day, which is two to three hours of channeling, but sometimes four or five hours. In Asheville, North Carolina, I was channeling up to four and a half hours each day. When I had private sessions after the days were up with eight hour workshops, I would also do personal sessions. So that would bump it up to six or seven hours in one day. So all of this really intense energy made me look back at the last few months since my father had passed and made me realize that anything that became over extensive in my own mindset or overstimulating in my sensory intake, I shut it down and shut it off. Part of that is the reason why these videos came to a halt too. When I was working on the computer, I was getting so upset. You know, I'm smart. I know all about these computers. I'm not paying someone to fix something I know I can fix. That stubbornness, that energy, that frustration was very, very deeply embedded. So I kept butting up against my own energy week after week, minute after minute, hour after hour, and finally, uh, I break free a little. Now, so for uh, some people who know astrology, they know that there was up to five planets in retrograde at any given time in the last few months. And I don't believe that the planets rule us, but I believe that they are a reflection of the energy that we are. So it was just showing us how bad we were getting our asses kicked over and over uh, for the last few months. So right now, uh, a lot of the planets uh, that deal with Capricorn energy and just collective energy are done being in retrograde. And it's funny because I wasn't really paying attention to it being in retrograde or out of retrograde, but I felt this lightning about a week and a half ago, and that's when I found out that Saturn was out of retrograde finally. Kalina told me she's she knows a lot more about astrology than I do, and she explained that Saturn is one of the ruling planets of Capricorns, which I had no idea. <laughs> if you think I have it bad, Kalina's got the double Capricorn energy. So we we push through we're here we have two supercomputers that are capable of doing video on my new computer i only have the newest software but it's the best software so i'm still trying to figure it out these videos are going to be a little less fancy when it comes to the intros and the songs and stuff for the for the near future but forgive me as i play with this if the coloring's a little funny or off uh, i'm going to figure that out the the program we're working with that right now we're working with a new software and we're going to to do what we can and keep getting forward with you guys. I just wanted to let you know where I'm coming from. 
I'm also going to share a little bit about this and then we'll get to the channeling, I promise. You guys have waited so patiently. I'm going to start doing uh, videos where I myself, Rob, am going to share a little bit about what goes on with me, but also we're going to start diving into the meticulous nature of the density master classes again. We've had two of them released publicly. Uh, Density Masterclass 101 and uh, Density Masterclass 101 Part 2 which were both the first one was about density dimensions the second about incarnation cycles this information since I've connected with Treb Nardif I understand to such a, a huge degree and with such an ease because when I'm linked into them while I'm channeling I absorb that information not just mentally but energetically I, I feel a part of my consciousness integrates it without me ever knowing about it so as it keeps going um, I'm just going to keep sharing and everything that I have learned I'm going to continue sharing with you guys and Cheney says hello our little kitty cat um, She's sharing with us too. So I'm going to keep pumping out as much as I can and I'm going to start dedicating uh, instead of the two or three days I'm going to try to dedicate at least four or five days per month and we might be moving into an office soon which means no more at home shooting only shooting outside when the weather is good shooting with our backdrops back here when it's not uh, our apartment that we live in is too small to shoot really nice uh, wide angle shots without catching a door or a cat running by or, or books laying up against the door so we're going to try to figure out uh, how to get into an office we're working on that now and when we do we'll have a place where we can shoot night and day and invite people for live sessions next year we're shooting for a lot of stuff me and Kalina want to go on tour next year financially that's a big thing um, there has to be a lot of financial support from the public for us to do that so we're going to try to get as much free information out there and also paid information so that we can make that balance and be able to get out to see you guys we want to be able to go all over the East Coast down south Midwest uh, out in the Plain region and out in the West Coast because we've only been able to get to Asheville North Carolina uh, Michigan um, California and a few other places between we want to really get out to where everyone in the US can see us and after we establish that next year then we're gonna come out to Europe and say hey to you guys and once we establish that we want to come out to Australia and see you guys in Asia and Africa wherever we can see you guys we want to see you we love you guys so much uh, thank you for listening to me I just needed to get what was in my heart shared with you guys because I feel responsible a lot as a, a person who has been a caretaker my whole adult life with my son I always worry about the needs of other people and I've always weighed that heavily against my own heart and my own needs so there's a lot of time where I am so worried about getting this information out to you guys that I beat myself or run myself ragged until it gets out and I'm finding a balance to take care of myself in the meantime I know you guys love me no matter what I know that you guys want to see our work even if it's a month late so I'm going to be easy on myself because I know you guys are easy on us too and I just really want to tell you how much I appreciate all the love, support, kind words, and sharing that you guys have done throughout the videos. Uh, don't forget to drop uh, any kind of comment down in any video that you watch of ours. If there's something that we're not talking about that you want to hear about, if there's something that you want to share with other people who are watching, please feel free to just lay those comments down. Uh, we try to keep our area a very safe and loving place where people feel safe putting their comments and in information. Um, if anyone comes in bullying or being rude, we'll get them out of there quick for you guys because we need you guys to feel safe too. And this community is one of the most difficult to, to be able to uh, accomplish a sense of trust with people. And we feel we've, we've gotten the trust of other people as well as our own trust given out to a lot of people who we've met and communicated with. And we, we really want to thank you guys for just being there for us as much as you feel we've been there for you. So thank you guys. Love you guys and enjoy the channeling. Love you guys. She loves you too if you didn't hear. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Greetings and salutations. We are Metatron. We walk with you towards the center. 
Many tools are given, many aspects of Metatron given to the collective one by one as a gift, the right to have been given to those who plan to ascend to the masters that you are. Each of you using this tool for your own desire to walk with us towards the center. Many humans walking towards the center in this time brings us a great joy. The aspect of Metatron which contains the center of heart and love shared its experience and tool with you. Today another tool, another experience is going to be shared. This time with a different aspect of Metatron. The aspect of dealing with sound steps forward. Greetings and salutations. We are the aspect of Metatron dealing with sound and vibration. What is a sound? How does it relate to vibration? First, a sound is a vibration. It's a vibrational tone that is heard and received by the instrument called ear. This instrument receives the vibration, the frequency and tune, and interprets it into your physical human brain as a registered key or tone. These tones are various energies that interact with other parts of your bodies in various ways. Before introducing the tool that helps you walk to the center dealing with sound, we must first explain how sound works in your reality, how sound interacts with your body to allow you to take the vibration and use it and utilize it in your own self, in your own understanding, and in your own ascension process. First, to explain how sound works, we have to explain to you the nature of all physical things in reality. Physical reality is made by atoms. There are smaller things than atoms, but this is the smallest thing we will speak about today. Each atom is mostly empty space. From your perception, from what your scientists understand, the atomic structure is mostly empty space. The electromagnetic field in each atom repels it from one another. The sound vibration from the atomic structures also play a part in this. Each atomic structure has a slightly different vibration. Some have huge differences in vibration, but most of the atoms that you come in contact with on your planet all are within a spectrum of vibrational frequency. This means that you're able to have all of your known elements on the periodical chart interact with one another in very similar ways, or at least in subtle ways. Some atoms that come together will cause larger negative or energetic reactions with one another. We will explain this in one moment. Before we explain, let us explain the subtleness in the interactions of the other atoms. When you have a vibrational quality to one atom and you place it next to another that is very similar in vibration, the subtle reaction is often the vibrational tone of both of those atoms will combine or balance one another out. You can see this in your water molecule. In your water molecule there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, the oxygen atom being a larger of the two. The hydrogen atom being smaller and two of them come together looking a lot like the Mickey Mouse hats that some people wear. The head and the top of the hat would represent the atom that is largest. 
the two smaller ears would represent the two atoms that are small. How can they mix with one another to create water? Vibrationally, they are similar enough where the actions and interactions are subtle. Once they all catch a vibrational frequency that evens out, it can create the water molecule. The water molecule in itself is essential for all life on the planet. So two different vibrational atoms come together, one in different quantity than the other, but all finding an equilibrium, all finding a common place of harmonic vibration, all allowing to build one atomic structure. Now look at some of the atoms that are not as compatible. Look at the ones that create violent or energetic reactions. When you place uh, very volatile elements or atoms next to one another, it can cause chemical reactions. This is often several different molecules that are made from several different atoms, and the vibration between all of them are so different that it causes explosions or fires. This occurs when there can be no harmony in all of the atomic structures vibrationally. This can be where none of the vibrations are able to sustain a synchronization with one another. Now when you see yourself in your life, you are much like the atom. When you go around happy people, people who are interested in the same things as you are, you come to an equilibrium or a stasis. In that energy, you find yourself very in flow and in sync with all things around you. You find yourself keeping positive mindsets and staying away from more negative mindsets. When you get around people or places that are negative in vibration for your synchronization, no synchronization or equilibrium can occur. In that state, either you or the others become volatile. There becomes frustration and thought and mind sync patterns. You are only allowed access to the more negative vibrational emotions. This means that you yourself will give in to fear, anger, and hatred, frustration, madness, jealousy, spite, and all of these things that make your life living a bad experience. So how do you sync up sound vibration? How do you sync up a tool that can be used to keep your equilibrium despite your vibrational quality? First there is music, the greatest tool of mankind. All of you come from a very tribal lineage. All of you are deeply synced with the sound vibrational quality of the earliest tools and instruments drums, sticks, vibrational seashells. Those things were something that were very usable to the early man. Those were things that no matter where you lived you could grab or use or utilize in your environment. For instance, the drum was an animal skin stretched and tied tightly to a rounder object or a hollow object. When tapping on that, you begin to make a sound. That rhythmic beating of the drum became a part of your earliest man DNA. This means when you hear the rhythmic tapping, take in how that feels. Feel the subtleness of your own excitement rising. When you hear someone who can play drums much better than we can, then you feel that excitement becoming larger and larger. You feel your own DNA starting to interact with all of the cells in your body. Each cell you have carries DNA. Each DNA that vibrates with emotional joy will start interacting with each cell in a positive manner. 
in chemical reactions you start receiving endorphins that are necessary for positive emotions that are needed for the excitement that you hold in your physical body vibrations of DNA come from the emotion all of you have learned that think of the sounds of the guitar it sounds much as a human voice singing when you hear someone singing in tune with a very beautiful vibration, it makes your heart open. It makes your energy rise. Why is this? All humans are meant to be one. All humans are meant to connect in a vibrational frequency that links all of you. All of you in an equilibrium of vibrational compatibility. Each human has the capacity and capability to link and connect with all other humans. The guitar sound, sounding much as the human voice, is a vibration of pure joy from the human experience. That is why many of you love hearing that beautiful connection through your guitar. Now some of you say, I do not like the beating of drums, I do not like the sounds of guitars, but think why that is. Very frequently you don't like to hear other people speak or other people sing. That is why you do not like the guitar. When it comes to the drums, that is a very earth-centered based energy. You do not care about being out into the wilderness. You don't care to interact with nature or animals. This is why you do not like the drums. There are very few exceptions in these rules. When you think about the deepest part of yourself and think about why it is you do not like those things, it will make much better sense. Now that you understand your emotional energy comes from your DNA, spills out into your physical body, causing the chemical reactions that most of your scientists can account for all things such as love, such as feeling kinmanship, such as feeling excited, happy, or depressed. All of those are chemical reactions measured by our scientists, but what creates those chemical interactions? Only the emotional energy from the DNA. The activation of sound for that DNA can alter your mood. That is the very first tool when dealing with sound and vibration. Use music that resonates with you. Use music that have instruments that are based in the very fundamental earth tribal energy. By finding those music patterns, it will activate your DNA enough to put you into a mood that is more positive and aligned than the mood that you are in now. Using the second vibrational tool, how can you create your own sound vibration? Singing is important for each of you. Some of you do not like to sing. Some of you think hearing your voice is a bad thing. Some of you even fearful to sing because you feel the sound that you are giving out to the universe isn't worthy of being heard by anyone else, even your own self cringing at your voice. This is only because you are not connected to your third chakra very well, because you have not allowed your heart to play a part of that singing. You do not have to sing. You can use oming sounds. You can also use humming sounds. All of those create vibrations in your cells. More than that, it creates vibrations in your chakra system. When you vibrate your chakra system, what occurs? Again, going through the cycle that we have just shared with you, it will stimulate the DNA, which stimulates the cells, which stimulate your emotion. This is your own internal music and gift from yourself to the universe. Think in a larger picture about vibration. Think in a larger picture about vibrational quality. The planet Earth has its own vibrational frequency in hertz or megahertz that is different from the planet Venus. Venus different from Mercury. Mercury different from Jupiter from Saturn, from Uranus, Neptune, and beyond. Even the center Sun 
has its own vibrational frequency. We understand that most of you believe you cannot hear in space. So if you take the vibrational quality that comes from that planet, putting it through your own instruments, you can hear the sounds of your universe around you. Even more so than this, when you hear the electromagnetic interactions with the sun to each planet, they create songs. Some of you have had the very great experience of being able to listen to the Earth's electromagnetic field. Many of you have been able to hear the grid, whether through instruments or from your own intuition and inner ears. When you hear this, it is a sound and a song that could never be duplicated by human instruments or by the personal inner voice of a human. When you listen to it through technology, it is taking again the sound vibrations and turning them into something that's translatable to hearing. When you hear it, it is such an experience that it will vibrate chakras and release the positive sensation chemical reactions in your body. The galaxy at hand has a vibration, each galaxy its own. Think about all of the vibrations of the different stars around you. Go into your night sky. Find your favorite star. Look inside of a radio telescope catalog to see what vibrational hertz or megahertz it gives off. Use an instrument sound vibrational tool. Many of them are available in your technology through the Internet Collective Consciousness. By putting in the hertz or megahertz, it will produce a hearable and tangible sound to you. Now you can start listening to your neighbors. Now you can start communicating with your galactic community. Now you are able to hear the sounds of the universe as they configure with one another and react with one another. Think back to what we said about those vibrations that are not compatible causing negative reactions. You can even see this play out in a larger picture in outer space. Sometimes you see stars supernova. Sometimes you see black holes eating stars. These are all vibrational frequency mismatch. They are vibrations that could not find an equilibrium. This can be caused by many things. Collective consciousness is no longer able to sustain their relationship to one another. Vibrational frequencies with a star that has been caused from vibrational frequency mismatches from all of the planets. Think about what vibrational frequency mismatching does to your own self. The emotional experiences at hand are very negative to your emotional state. When your vibration alone is causing mismatches, your beliefs tell you one thing, your heart tells you another, your gut tells you something, your mind another, your mind and heart mismatching in vibration. Vibrational mismatching does not have to just occur with other people or other environments. It happens internally. How are you going to fix this inner vibrational sound so that you can resonate, so that your emotional patterns, your mental self does not become destroyed? It is very easy to work on this by using sound. Again, hearing music and giving your own sound vibrations is good, but you have to think on this again in a larger picture. What two things are mismatching, your heart and your mind? Now you have to find a way to bring the vibrations to a similar and resonant enough vibration where it will either be subtle or completely connectable vibrations. Your heart tells you one thing because it is full of love, because it is connected to the emotion of love and open like love is. Just as God gives you love, it is the greatest open experience. Many times the human mind is closed. It is not open to accepting or to loving. So you must allow your mind vibration 
seem to align with your heart. Which do you know is better? Each time you've listened to your heart, you experience a better scenario than when you let your mind overrun. That is the biggest clue on which to choose to bring the other towards the vibrational harmonic connection. When you think of an equilibrium, think about pulling the one that is furthest away from love back towards the one that is closest with love. These tools will give you great insight to sound vibration and how it is played throughout. We are Metatron. We walk with you towards the center.